What you reading, sweet Robin? The Winds of Winter? <laughs> no, I'm reading Gurm's latest book, Breast Milk and Blood, A History of Aaron Kings, Volume 2, Blood and Breast Milk. It's really a masterpiece with fully fleshed out characters. The plot lines are so new and interesting. Listen to this passage. In the year 2376 before conquest, the Vale of Aaron was ruled by a young sickly boy named Fobert Aaron, named by some the Sour Robin. A year prior, his mother, Bysa of House Tully, fell out the moon door. Maester Charlize writes that the tragedy was an accident, while Septon Theron reports that it was a suicide. But all agree that there was absolutely nothing suspicious about it. Yeah, that, that's some riveting stuff. Oh, and the next 30 pages go on about a man named Bronze Grom Royce. Disney is killing us with these extended universes. We need ideas for shows that will lead to other shows and other shows. Think, people, think. Dude, I totally got it. A prequel series. Bronze Grom Royce goes to Ib. <laughs> Hot D. We got the trailer for Hot D. This is why I'm Hot D. This is why I'm Hot D. This is why, this is why, this is why I'm Hot D. Wow, Chad, you seem really into House of the Dragon. Um, I'm not actually Chad. I'm Chadwick Summerchild. Chad Summerchild's great, 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 great grandfather. And thus, you should care about everything I say and do because I'm an ancestor. Can I call you Chad? Yes, you may. Well, I see that our first scene is with Rhaenyra, looking sad, perhaps thinking about the coming Dance of the Dragons, and I see, as with Game of Thrones, they have not gone with purple eyes. Woke! I'm sorry, what? They changed Rhaenyra's eye color. Woke HBO, am I right? Um, I, I don't know. In the next scene, we seem to have Daemon Targaryen, King Viserys' brother, taking a dragon egg from Dragonstone for his pregnant paramour Missaria, which happens in the year 105 in Fire and Blood. Woke! They changed Missaria's hair color, Lyseni have silver Valyrian hair, and this has been firmly established, and they have never portrayed a Lyseni any differently before. This is clearly the work of a woke HBO executive. Yeah, okay, so we have the Hand of the King, Otto Hightower, and Lord Commander of the Kingsguard, Kristen Cole, trying to stop them. In the book, Damon simply gives back the egg, but I see that they wanted some action. Later in the trailer, Damon has a sword out, so maybe there'll be a fight. So in the next scene, we get someone riding a dragon. It's difficult to say who. The dragon looks yellow to me, so it implies that it's Cyrax with Rhaenyra on top of her, but who knows? Vagar is apparently bronze and ridden by Lena and then Aemond, or maybe a dragon color was changed. Woke! And then we get a ceremony with King Viserys naming Rhaenyra as his heir. So this naming happens in the year 105, the same year that Daemon tries to take that dragon egg. And, you know, there was this council in 101 that supposedly established that women would always come behind men in succession, so Daemon the brother would be Viserys' heir instead of Rhaenyra the daughter. But Viserys' newborn son dies after a day, and then he hears that Daemon made a bad joke about it, and so he names Rhaenyra. And so they've placed in a scene of Daemon, who is the head of the Gold Cloaks, looking angry about this, though this scene might be from a different time. And while it's never said outright in the book, Rhaenyra being chosen over Daemon is likely what inspires him to take an egg to try to obtain more power. The show is clearly being more direct with this, and 105 is being shown as a rather significant year. One very small change is that Damon has gold cloaks with him on Dragonstone, when in the book he's already resigned from his position as head of the City Watch. Woke! And then we get Corlys Velaryon, the husband of Rhaenys Targaryen, who has passed over for the throne. Oh my god, I cannot believe that they've made Corlys black. Don't people know that Valyrians are white? This is firmly established. There has never been a Valyrian character portrayed by a black person. You know, race is really important in Westeros, with its long history of slavery, war, and segregation based on the color of one's skin. One cannot just change the skin color of someone in Westeros and expect the story not to change. Race is important to history in Westeros, and people need to consider race in Westeros. I mean, imagine back when they did Game of Thrones, if they changed the hair color of a really important character when that hair color had significant bearing on the plot. Or the eye color of a really important character when eye color has a significant bearing on the plot. That would have been horrible and people would have been up in arms. People would have been making comments right and left about how the show is ruined. But no, when skin color is changed, the show somehow gets a pass because of wokeness. Ah, uh, yeah, I, I think I miss old Chad. 
Anyway, we get a cameo from Boromir Baratheon and a Rickon or Rickard Stark. They actually aren't very big characters in the books, and it's their children who play large roles in the Dance of the Dragons, but it's possible that the show is going to add a Stark B story. And then we get Rhaenys, the queen who never was, who, by the way, has black Baratheon hair in the book, telling Rhaenyra about sexism in Westeros, as she believes it was the reason she was passed over twice in history to be queen. Whether it was truly sexism, or if it was secretly something else, like dragon hatching abilities and maesters pulling the strings, is debated amongst fans. We will see if the Old Town Conspiracy makes it into the show. Woke! I mean, why do they have to make this about sexism? Girl power! Mary Sue's! Woke! I mean, it's kind of the whole plot of the story, whether Rhaenyra should be queen with her sex being an argument against her. I mean, the story was originally published in an anthology called Dangerous Women. What did you expect? Woke! Anyway, next we get Rhaenyra and the Black Council looking over the table of Westeros at Dragonstone. Rhaenyra's character is largely based on Daenerys, so if a Targaryen queen planning an invasion from Dragonstone looking over a table of the Seven Kingdoms seems familiar, it completely is. In fact, in the book, she has a dwarf advisor. Woke! Next we have the Council of 101, where Rhaenys and her son Laenor are passed over for the throne in favor of Viserys. This is actually the second time that Rhaenys is passed over, the first time being a decade earlier, for Viserys' father Balon. And here are some people, probably some maesters, carrying a box. This is perhaps where ballots, or the equivalent of, are placed during the council. In the book, the count is never revealed for the Council of 101, leaving open the possibility that the election was rigged by the maesters. Woke! And here we get Alicent Hightower, famously wearing the green dress for which her faction is named. Alicent becomes Viserys' second wife, and the green dress incident takes place at their five-year anniversary party. She and Viserys were married in 106, pretty close to the time of Rhaenyra being named heir and Daemon trying to take that egg. So I imagine that 105 to 106 may all be in the same episode. Who knows if this scene actually takes place on the five-year anniversary or some other event. So next we see a dragon egg incubating on a brazier. Most of the significant dragons in our story hatch before the time period we're talking about, but it's possible that a couple hatchings could be pushed forward in time, like Lanor's Sea Smoke or Rhaenyra's Cyrax. It may also be that we're looking at Alicent's son, Aegon II's egg, or perhaps the egg of one of Rhaenyra's children, Jace, Luke, and Joffrey, or maybe the egg Daemon Targaryen tried to take. We simply don't know, though the brazier gives the impression that this is on Driftmark or maybe King's Landing, rather than Dragonstone. Woke, woke, woke. Next we get Otto Hightower talking to his daughter about winning the Game of Thrones. It's heavily implied that Otto's entire goal from day one as Hand was to have his daughter be queen and his grandchildren on the Iron Throne, so it's a little odd that they were having a discussion about this so late in the game. Otto's scheming is meant to be heavily paralleled with Tywin, who as Hand wanted Cersei to marry the king's son Rhaegar. And we should note that in the books, for the most part, the Hightowers are a rather isolationist house who we know little about. So Otto's moves during the Dance of the Dragons are quite unusual, and fans debate whether it has something to do with an Old Town conspiracy. Next seems to be the marriage of Laenor and Rhaenyra. Now, there are a bunch of rumors of Rhaenyra being romantic with several characters, including Harwin Strong, Kristen Cole, and Daemon Targaryen. And here she is marrying Laenor, who may or may not be gay or bisexual. And there is a wedding tourney where Kristen Cole breaks the collarbone of Harwin Strong and kills Laenor's friend or maybe lover, Joffrey. A lot goes down during this wedding, and shortly after, Rhaenyra gets pregnant, and we have no idea who the father is. We will see how much of a mystery the show gives us on the father or fathers of Rhaenyra's children. By the way, Daemon seems to have a new haircut because he's been fighting in the Stepstones for years. Shortly after Rhaenyra's marriage to Laenor, Daemon marries Laenor's sister Lena. So 114 to 115 could be another episode time period. Woke! Next we have a Valarian funeral in the year 120, and even though Rhaenyra looks sad, it appears to be Daemon's wife Lena who has died as the tomb has breasts. A rather important event that happens after Lena dies is the claiming of Lena's old Mount Vagar by Alicent's son Aemond. The Black Faction actually held all of the large dragons at this point in our story, so Aemond securing a large dragon for the Greens was a pretty big deal. And when he does claim the dragon, Aemond ends up fighting Rhaenerys' son Luke and loses an eye. In fact, this scene may be Aemond after the dragon stealing and fight incident. 
Whoever the Targaryen is, he has short silver hair, which eliminates Daemon, who has long hair, and Rhaenyra's Valarian children, who have brown hair, so it really can only be Aegon, Aemond, or Daron, and Daron seems a little young, and Aemond makes the most sense. SJW's ruining everything! Anyway, after this, we get the wedding between Daemon and Rhaenyra. This happens shortly after the two funerals of Laenor and Lena. so it appears 120 is a big year and a possible episode. We then have Alicent attacking Rhaenyra. This is likely her being upset after her son Aemond loses an eye. In the book, she only requests that Luke lose an eye, a callback to Cersei and the Bible. Viserys does not have Luke lose an eye, though. Here in the show, Alicent holds the cat's paw dagger, which of course was used in an attempted murder of Bran, and is used by Arya to kill the Night King. And so we have this big parallel scene. This is a complete creation of the show, with no dagger or stabbing incident happening in the book. Thank goodness they have a callback to this. This was everyone's favorite scene of the show. I do wonder if Alicent Hightower can regenerate. And in our final scene, we have Daemon approaching a dragon. Now, if this were Aemond, I would say that it's the stealing of Vagar, but it's clearly Daemon, so I think it's him trying to retrieve a dragon egg. The dragon could be a bunch of different dragons, but Cannibal is known for being the most fierce, so I'm guessing it's Cannibal. Oh my god, it's just so woke. Um, Chad, is that a black dwarf over there from Lord of the Rings? Where? SJWs? Ugh. <sighs> So we appear to have footage from at least four or five episodes. I've put the major events we've seen and some additional events we didn't see but happen around the same time in italicies. We saw the Council of 101 and though we didn't see the coronation of Viserys, I would think those would go together. Rhaenyra being named as heir we saw as well as an egg theft, though we didn't see Viserys and Alicent's wedding. We got one quick image that might be the anniversary dinner, but that's it. And then we saw Rhaenyra and Laenor's wedding, but not Daemon and Lena's wedding. The actors for Rhaenyra and Alicent then change between the weddings and the funerals. And we see Lena's funeral, but not Laenor's, and violence around Aemon's theft of Vagar, as well as Rhaenyra and Daemon's wedding. And we saw some brief glimpses of planning and brooding before the Dance of the Dragons. Oh, hey Chad. So I met your great-great-great-great-great-grandfather Chadwick? Oh man, I'm, I'm sorry about that. That guy's a total boomer. <laughs> so what do you think of Corlys Velaryon? Corlys Velaryon? He looks friggin' badass! Let's hope we get that sea snake prequel, bro! Hey!